I'm Dr. Ben Ryan, I'm a neuroscientist, and today I want to talk about how the brain functions when we interact with people on the internet. I think we can all agree that we're going through a pretty tough time. We have wars, political tensions, natural disasters, and even pandemics. But here's something to consider that often goes unnoticed. Despite all this, we are more connected than ever before. Right now, you're watching me from probably thousands of miles away because for the first time in human history, we have all gathered in one space, social media and the internet. In our pockets, we carry with us the power to connect with anyone almost anywhere on the planet. If you told your great, 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 great grandmother that this would be possible today, she would probably say, wow, that's wonderful. There must be communication and peace and harmony all across the world. World. But in reality, there's not. Here on the internet, we often treat each other pretty badly. As a person who posts videos on the internet, people can be pretty mean. I often get attacked for no reason. Maybe you've experienced this too, because there's just so much hostility and division on the internet. So a big question is, why are people so mean online? As a neuroscientist who studies empathy and social behavior, I believe that it has to do with how the brain processes social interactions. I've actually developed a theory about why people are so mean on the internet. And when I say a theory, I literally mean a scientific theory that I just published. My theory has to do with how the brain processes empathy, and I want to tell you about it. But first, we have to ask a bigger question. What is empathy? Empathy is when you understand someone else's experience or share their emotions. This obviously plays a huge role in social relationships because when we can share or understand someone else's emotions, we tend to act more compassionately toward them because when they suffer, we suffer. So when we're mean to someone, we are likely to feel bad too as a result. But how does empathy happen? Like, how do we get to the point of sharing and understanding someone else's emotions? Well, it's generally through observing social cues. Research shows that the brain areas involved in empathy, like the anterior cingulate cortex and the insular cortex, are activated by observing things like facial expression. When the brain detects someone expressing an emotion through their face, these brain areas come online. The same thing happens when we hear sounds that convey emotions, like someone laughing or crying. But here's the thing. When we're arguing with someone on the internet, maybe in the comments section of a post or on another thread of just text, there are none of these social cues to help us understand what the other person is experiencing. And without these social cues, the brain is not designed to engage its empathy systems. I mean, think about it. For millions of years, humans have interacted face to face. And because of this, evolution has shaped our brains so that we engage empathy based on things we experience in face to face interactions. Why would the brain think to turn on its empathy systems when we're looking at text on a screen. Because of this, I believe that we're less likely to engage with someone else's emotions and care about them, which may make us more likely to leave a nasty comment or say something mean. When we're not as finely attuned to someone else's emotions, it's easier to be unkind because we are not emotionally impacted by their suffering. Okay, now you might be wondering, what about videos? I mean, right now you can see my facial expressions and you can hear my tone of voice, so shouldn't you be experiencing empathy? Theoretically, yes, but there's one problem. This is a pre-recorded video. I recorded this some time ago, and so what you're watching right now is a replay. And that seems to matter when it comes to the brain. In one research study, people watched a video of someone and stared into their eyes, like you might be doing now, and they were told to imagine what that person was thinking. This is an exercise of empathy. But here's the catch. Sometimes they were watching a live stream, while other times they were watching a pre-recorded video and they didn't know what they were watching. And it turned out, when people were looking at pre-recorded videos, they showed less activity in those empathy-related brain areas. Which means that when we watch pre-recorded videos of people on the internet, we may be less likely to engage the empathy systems in our brains, even though we can see their social cues. There's a lot more that goes into this theory, but overall, I just want to say it's important to keep all this in mind when you're on the internet. Please be kind and remember that there is a real human being on the other side of the screen with real emotions.